expeditions nowadays are generally considered as safe due to advancements in technology, space still is one of the most complicated ventures. Till today, there have been a total of 18 fatalities in manned space mission, the last one being in 2003. Of these 18, only 3 have actually died in what we call as space, which starts roughly at about 100 km from Earth's surface. Their Soyuz 11 performed a textbook perfect landing in 1971. So, recovery teams were appalled to find three men crew sitting dead in their couches, with blood dripping from their ear and nose. Further investigation showed that a ventilation wall had ruptured, asphyxiating the cosmonauts and the resulting drop in pressure also exposed the crew to the vacuum of space. They were the only human beings to ever experience such a fate. They died within seconds of rupture. But after 2003, there hasn't been any death in space. Presently, anyone sent to ISS must be in impeccable health condition, and there has never been a death on space station. However, with longer journeys through space inevitably coming through future decades, new issues are arising. Now that we are planning Mars missions and commercial space programs, chances are high that something might go wrong. So let's look at what would happen to the dead bodies of astronauts in space. Let's first look at how they can die and what would be afterwards. In the first case, we'll assume that you were at a distance long enough that you were in deep space beyond any influence of Earth. To start with most basic scenario, let's consider simply getting thrown out of spacecraft without any spacesuit. In this case, you would have between 15 seconds and 2 minutes to live, during which time the fluids in your body will begin to boil due to lack of air pressure. If you hold your breath, the air inside your lungs would expand, rupturing your lungs and killing you quite quickly. But if you didn't hold your breath, you could remain conscious for up to 2 minutes. Almost instantly, the cosmic radiation would begin to burn your skin. But if you're not near any radiation source, temperatures of minus 270 Celsius would start freezing you to death very slowly. However, your death would most likely happen as a result of suffocation. Now, a dead body on Earth would begin to decompose due to bacteria in the air and within the body. But in space, it would either freeze or mummify. If your body was mummified, all the biological processes would stop rather quickly, so there wouldn't be any further breakdown of your body. But that frozen or mummified corpse could potentially sail through the cosmos for years before encountering another object or force that acted upon it. Now, if you're in a spacesuit, however, the situation is quite a bit different. The suit will contain oxygen supply that can last for hours and a liter of water, but eventually it'll end, and so will your life. But until you die, you can watch eternal space, stars, and planets. After that, if there's enough heat, death in a spacesuit wouldn't be that different from death on Earth. Regular decomposition by the bacteria inside the body would then occur. Although those bacteria would quickly use up remaining oxygen, at that point, anaerobic processes would take over. So the bacterial respiration would switch to fermentation. However, the likelihood of there being a constant source of heat is rather small. Floating around in a spacesuit as a slowly rotting corpse doesn't sound ideal, but that wouldn't be your long-term fate. Eventually, the radiation all around you will break down your spacesuit. This process may take years or longer, but eventually when the suit is compromised, the air pressure built up inside will get released, and this rapid expansion of air would cause a small explosion, similar to that of a bursting of a balloon, which will destroy the suit and the dead body inside. Now for the second case, if you die when you are inside the Earth's gravitational field, you would start to fall towards Earth very slowly. Depending on your position, it can take you days to enter the Earth's atmosphere. And don't you worry, the good news is you won't feel the impact of falling, because you'll be turned into ash before you reach the ground, as friction with atmosphere will generate temperatures of about 1500 degrees Celsius. Now let's look at a scenario of death inside a space station. It may surprise you that NASA doesn't currently have any solid plan about what to do if a death occurs in space, rather they focus on prevention. Following are some of the methods which NASA follows to do so. NASA mandates spacewalking astronauts to use tethers, which are essentially steel braided cables, one end of which is hooked to spacewalker and the other end is connected to vehicle. But should those fail, you would float off according to whatever forces that were acting on you when you broke loose. For such situations, you would be wearing your emergency jetpack, called SAFER. It uses small jets to let an astronaut move around in space. NASA's plan then dictates that you take manual control and fly back to safety. But let's say, despite of all these safety measures, a death occurs. Following are some of the options to deal with it. Although NASA hasn't publicly released a contingency plan for this sort of event, decisions regarding the handling of a dead body would be left with station commander. 
The most logical situation would be to keep the corpse inside a pressurized spacesuit, which might help to deal with gases released from the body, and the body would be most likely stored in the coldest areas of ship to reduce the decomposition rate. One of the more morbid options, of course, would be to simply throw the body into the space, which might seem logical at first considering extremely high costs per pound of payload, but that won't work because bodies floating through space can collide with other spacecrafts, or even float over to alien planets and effectively colonize them with human remains and bacteria. NASA's strongest plan yet is something called body bag. The body bag would inflate into a coffin-like shape and contain the corpse. After any funerary rituals, the airtight body bag would be then sent to airlocks, where body would freeze to cold temperatures of space. After totally frozen, the body bag will be brought back inside, where its contents would be vibrated until it turns into dust. Then it's dehydrated, leaving behind 50 pounds of dust, and this way the ashes of astronauts could safely return to Earth. Okay, so that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.